Yeah. Most people. If I sneeze, I'm sorry. I'm not sick. The yeah. allergy. Yeah. Is that's that's <laughs> okay. Um, most people, most people, even if they're they're not church people, they're not um, students of the Bible. At the very least, when they go to a funeral, they get a little handout that has Psalm 23 in it, yeah. right? And so it 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 sounds religious. It sounds uh, like like uh, something that is comforting at the very least. And and so most people when they, they read it, yes. I'll choose that. Put that on the little card, you know, at, at, a, at a funeral. But for us that, that know Christ and that know the Word, Psalm 23 is a song. Psalms are songs. Psalm 23 is a song that pa- paints a picture, a word picture of Jesus Christ. And so I want us to see this morning who Jesus is in Psalm 23. It's amazing because King David, all those hundreds of years, hundreds and hundreds of years prior, took a paintbrush with words and described exactly who Jesus is. He says, uh, and we know, we know the psalm, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And so that speaks of, um, that speaks of, um, uh, of the Lord, uh, um, uh, providing, uh, he's our shepherd, he's the one that provides. Matthew tells us, therefore do not be like them, for your father knows the things you have need of before you ask. That's Jesus' words. So Jesus is the provider. In Luke, uh, he said to his disciples, therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, nor about the body, what you will put on. Life is more than food, and the body is more than clothing. Consider the ravens, for they neither sow nor reap, which have neither storehouses nor barns, and yet God feeds them. Of how much more value are you than the birds? So He provides. He knows even before we ask. And it doesn't mean that we, don't, that we stop asking, because He is our source. Jesus is our source. He is the source of life. He who has the Son has life. If you don't have life, you don't have anything, right? Mm-hmm. And the, the Word says that he who has the Son has life. Amen. He who has not the Son has not life. You have nothing. Mm-hmm. Jesus is our provider. Um, then the next phrase in Psalm 23 says, He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. Amen. And that speaks of emotional health. Emotional health. And in, in Philippians, Paul describes Jesus. He says, do not be anxious about anything. But in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And here's the part. And the peace of God which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. If you don't have the Lord to, to make you lie down be, by green pastures and still waters, you, you can't have peace. I don't know how people who don't know Christ, how they go through stuff. How do they go through, through, through sickness and death and financial hardships and, and catastrophes and disasters? How do they go through that? They, go, they, they turn to something else. They turn to something else. And they go out of their minds. There's no peace. They say that, 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 that the, the number one disease in the United States today is Prozac deficiency. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Right. <laughs> I'm glad you got it. I've told that to teenagers. They don't get it. <laughs> oh, Lord. But He makes us to lie down. <laughs> well, you know, since I started praying, I don't know, maybe as much as a year ago, on Sunday mornings, you know, when they call the pastors and leaders up, and then people come up to, um, to ask for prayer. Without exception, every single person I have prayed for, I ask them, 
um, how can I pray for you today? And every single one of them, so far, without exception, every Sunday, you know what they ask? I have a lost son, I have a lost daughter, my grandchildren. Every last one of them. And we know, at our age, if, if our children are sick, if they're lost, if they don't know Christ, and then our grandchildren. And so do, what, what do grandparents do? Who don't know the Lord, what do they do? They lose their mind. But thank God, thank God, He gives us a peace that goes beyond our ability to even comprehend it. Amen. Jesus said, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give it to you as the world gives. It's not Prozac. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Psalm 23 describes Jesus as our mental health worker, as our healer. Next, next phrase in Psalm 23 says, He guides me in paths of righteousness for His name's sake. He guides me. Jesus said, But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, that is, it's me, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. When the Spirit of truth has come, He will, what? Guide you into all truth. For He will not speak on His own authority, but whatever He hears, He will speak. And He will tell you things to come. So, through this Holy Spirit, God leads us to do the right thing in the paths of righteousness. Psalm 23 is painting this beautiful picture of our provider, our mental health uh, healer, Amen. our comforter. The next phrase, e even the, the world knows it, because even in the movies they have it. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. This last Saturday, just a few days ago, I was called uh, together with my brother to go to, um, to, the, to a home. Uh, her name is Alice. And Alice was vibrant. I, I've known her since years, you know, 50, 60 years at least. Uh, her, her husband, Frank, was the CA leader. How many remember the CAs? Remember the CAs? Youth, that's what the youth groups were called, Christ Ambassadors, the CA. CA and the CA director for the Los Angeles section. That means all the churches in the Los Angeles section. And he was full of life. I remember him. He was, he was closer to my dad's. He was closer to my dad's age than to me. So he was older. I was still a teenager, and he was already married and stuff. And, and just brilliant guy, funny, and knew his scripture, the man of power. And then he, he managed the softball team at his church. He was a great athlete and, and competitor. And, and we became uh, friends through that. Uh, and uh, we, we would play against each other, you know, like the, the, the world depended on it, right? It, it was the World Series to us. And, but we loved it. He, we, we became great friends. And his wife, Alice, was, was one of these pastor's wives that is full of life, is like a cheerleader type per personality, right? The years pass. Frank passed away a couple of years ago. My brother and I spoke at his funeral. And Saturday, Frank's daughter called us. Can you come? Anoint my mother so we can say farewell. She's had dementia for the last few years. She's in a hospital bed in the tiny little house where, that they bought way back. <laughs> I remember those rooms because I grew up in a house just like that, up the street from where they live. Ten by twelve rooms, you know, just, and they have a big hospital bed in there. She's had dementia. She hadn't eaten on Saturday. She hadn't eaten for eight days. Hadn't eaten, hadn't eaten a thing. So she's ready to go. And when we walked in, uh, you know, we said, hide Alice and, you know, and she's looking like, you could tell, she was kind of asking with her eyes, who are these people? <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know who they are. But then I started to read Psalm 23. 
The Lord is my shepherd. As soon as she heard, the Lord is my shepherd, you know, those, those vacant eyes, empty, recognized it. Got it. When I said, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. She relaxed and she smiled. Little smile like, yes, that's what I needed. She still didn't know who we were, we were but she knew who Jesus is. <laughs> and when we sang, Oh, how I love Jesus. You could see her trying. You know, she, she, was, she knew it. She recognized there's something stirred up in her. She knew the Good Shepherd. She knew the Jesus of Psalm 23. And the peace that came over their house, over Terry, we said our goodbyes. And Terry said, I'm ready. I, I praise God. You know, it, it was a kind of a joyous time of transition. I don't know if she's passed away yet or not. But Psalm 23, it gives us <laughs> freedom from fear. We fear not even death. Not even death. It's the greatest release into into what we're looking for. That's, 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 <laughs> I'm going to that city. I'm going to see Jesus. <laughs> 365 times, one for every day of the year, the Bible says, fear not. If you count them, fear not or be not afraid. Isaiah says, fear not, for I am with you. Who, who's he talking about? It's Jesus. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. And Timothy tells us, Therefore I remind you to stir up the gift of God which is in you. What's the gift? It's Jesus. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. That dementia gave way when she heard the name of Jesus. That's all she needed to know. No fear. No fear. Ready to see him. Fear not. Nehemiah wrote about this. Let me read this. And Nehemiah, who was the governor, Ezra the priest and scribe, and the Levites who taught the people, said to all the, said to all the people, This day is holy to the Lord your God, so do not mourn nor weep. For all the people wept when they heard the words of the law. From hearing the, the, reading the Bible, they wept. Then he said to them, Go your way, eat the fat, drink the sweet, and send portions to those for whom nothing is prepared for this day is holy to our Lord. Do not sorrow, for the joy of the Lord is our strength. <laughs> Fear not. Fear not. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runneth over. What is that? In Romans, Paul tells us, For the kingdom of God is not eating or drinking, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit of God causes our cup to overflow even in the depths of, 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 of catastrophe, even in the face of death. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Jesus said, He who believes in me, rivers of living water shall flow from within him. Because that's what happens when you come to the Lord. People say, what happened to you? You were so depressed. You were always angry. You were always quiet. And now look at you. you know? <laughs> what has happened to you? What has happened to me is that the Lord has anointed my head with oil and my cup overflows. The next phrase in Psalm 23 is, Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. Uh, one, one day, um, I, I don't remember why, but we, we did a little skit, short little skit, like at offering time at the church. And I had, uh, and I had uh, two kids, good athletes, <laughs> wear one of those sandwich signs. that One, one said... Um, goodness, and the other one said mercy. And then I had another kid 
And I told him, run. And goodness and mercy started chasing him all over the church. So it's a platform and down the side and up and down the aisle. And, you know, the kids loved it. Oh, yeah, that's great. And surely goodness and mercy were chasing them all over. <laughs> and we look back now, 60, 70, 80 years of our, down the road, back down the road. And how many can say, goodness and mercy have followed me all the days of my life. Even when I didn't deserve, when I was a brat, oh, I remember as a teenager, oh, but goodness and mercy were following me. I didn't know the Lord. I had never heard of church. I had never been in a church. I had never heard the gospel. Now I look back, I was being pursued by goodness and mercy. <laughs> oh my, oh my. And Jesus, Matthew 28, Jesus came and spoke to them saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all the things that I have commanded you, and here's the part. And lo, I am with you always. At the funeral, I was there. By the sick bed, I was there. When you lost your home, you lost your job, I was there. When your kid ran away from home and committed that, I was there. Amen. And when you blew it, I was there. And when you came back, I was right there. Even unto the end of the age. He is with us always. I was reminded, I know on the, driving over here, I was, th I was thinking of my grandson. He's, he'll be 28 now, but when he was little, <laughs> he saw his shadow. You've seen this happen, right? He saw his shadow, and he tried to get away from it. <laughs> and, uh, and wherever he ran, the shadow followed him. <laughs> and, he, <laughs> and he would turn around and, and he, said, get it, get it. he got scared. He went, oh, I am with you always. <laughs> Not only like a shadow following us, but he is in you. In you. <laughs> and that way, wherever you go, there he is. I used to tell the kids, you need, you need to get right with God, because wherever you go, there you are. And they think, oh, that's deep, right? <coughs> but to us, I say, wherever you go, there he is. David wrote, where can I go to escape from, the, from God? Where can I go? If I go to the depths of hell, <laughs> there he is. <laughs> if I go to the ends of the earth, there he is. If I ascend to the heavens, there he is. He is with us always. And you know, the worst thing when you're going through bad stuff is to feel alone. Loneliness. I remember after mom passed away, dad one day told me, you know what? The worst thing is the loneliness. He said, it's heavy. It's like, like a heavy blanket. It just, the loneliness. So how, how do you get through that? He knew the Lord. He knew the Lord. He forced himself to go over, over and pick up his guitar, start praising God. And then you could see the joy of the Lord because Jesus was with him. Otherwise, you go out of your mind. You go out of your mind. Lo, I am with you always. And the last phrase is, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This speaks of hope. Forever. No matter what happens. No matter what happens. You lose your house. You lose your job. You lose your children. You wind up dead. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. No matter what. No matter what. John said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, 
Believe also in me, Jesus said. In my Father's house are many mansions. You think you have a nice house now? (laughs) If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. What for? That where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know. And the way you know. Later on, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, right? Mm -hmm. Titus expressed it this way. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that, denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present age, looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself his own special people to dwell with him forever. You're special. Not the small school bus special. I mean, you're special. Real special. And this morning I said, Lord, how do I wrap this up? Lord gave me this verse in uh, Colossians chapter 1. The mystery which has been hidden from ages and from generations, but now has been revealed to his saints. That's you. To them God willed to make known what are the riches of the glory of this mystery. The riches of the glory of this mystery. The gospel. What is it? Christ in you, in you, is the hope of glory. Amen. My Father's house I will dwell forever. He is the blessed hope. He is the good shepherd of Psalm 23. He's our provider, our mental health healer. He he is all in all. When we read Psalm 23, we just see Jesus. Jesus. It's it's like like a diamond. A diamond... The more you, you turn it in, in a different color and a different shape, depending on the light and the situation and where you are, but it's brilliant. It's still a diamond. And that's Jesus. You need hope? Oh, there's hope. You need eternal life? Oh, there's eternal life. You, you are lacking for something? Oh, there's Jesus, my provider. No matter how you... Psalm 23 just kind of covers it all. It's the diamond. It's the, the jewel of the Old Testament. The Lord's Prayer does that in the New Testament, but, but in the Old Testament, Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd. Do you know him today? Yes, yes. How many can say, I know that shepherd? I know that shepherd. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you.